Hello students, myself Professor Gada Kesses from SND College of Engineering and Research Center, Eula. Student, we are learning the final year subject that is nothing but solar and wind energy. From that subject, we have seen some topics from unit number 1 to unit number 3. In the unit number 4, that is our case study related to the solar energy application. So, from unit number 4, today we are going to see one of the case study that is nothing but solar PV water pumping system. That means how that solar photovoltaic system is used for water pumping system that we are going to see in the today's lecture. So let's see the use of solar PV module for the water pumping is one of the most attractive application due to the several advantages. In general, a solar water pumping system consists of PV modules, motor pump and storage tanks. So that is our components of the solar water pumping system. The block diagram of solar PV water pumping system is given below. So let us see here is a block diagram of solar water pumping system. So here PV module is there. Then MPPT inverter that is nothing but the inverter is there. So that inverter will convert DC current generated by solar module to the DC current for driving the electric motor. And that motor will pump the water and it will store the water at the higher level. So that is the block diagram of the solar PV water pumping system. So let us see what they have said. The storage tank can be bought of as an electric energy storage media like the battery. Therefore, the use of the battery is not required for water pumping application. Also, DC motor can directly be coupled with the solar PV panel. Avoiding the use of the any inverter, an AC motor can also be used with an inverter, which converts DC power of a PV module into the AC power. Additionally, a PV water pumping system can also have the maximum power point tracking that is MPPT device to match the PV module output impedance with that of the motor to extract the maximum power the throughout the day. So that is nothing but the solar PV module water pumping system. So block diagram also have seen. Then they have said that the use of the solar PV module for the water pumping system is an attractive option as the use of battery and inverter can be avoided. So use of batteries and use of inverters can be avoided by water solar PV water pumping system that is why it is an attractive system. Similarly, to solar home lightning system, a PV pumping system can be designed for sizes ranging from very small water pumping requirement for drinking water to large water volume requirement for the irrigation purpose also. That means for household purpose and for irrigation purpose also we can use that solar PV water pumping system. So that is the advantage. Then they have given block diagram of solar PV water pumping system that we have seen. So, next point they have given for in the case studies that is nothing but design of the solar PV pumping system. So, block diagram we have seen, but how to design all the components that steps are given here. So, let us see one by one all the steps. So, design of solar PV pumping system is given. So, design of solar PV pumping system requires knowledge about how much water needs to be pumped at what depth water should be pumped and how many solar panel will be required for given water requirement, what should be the rating of the motor used in the PV panel etc. So that all requirement you should know before designing the solar PV pumping system. The overall design of the system can be divided in the following steps. So let us see which are the steps which are involved in the solar PV system design. So step first is that determine amount of water required per day. That means you should know amount of water you should require per day. So if once you know amount of water required according to that we will know that how much water we have to lift per day. 
second step is that determine the total dynamic head for the water pumping total dynamic head means what we have to determine that from how many depth you have to pick up the water and at which height you have to raise the water that means you have to determine total head from bottom to the top where you have to reach the water so that is nothing but total dynamic head so you that you have to calculate or determine so that is the second step step number 3 is that determine hydraulic energy required per day hydraulic energy required per day means what the amount of energy you required to pick up the water from bottom level to raise it into the top level for driving the electrical energy and that can be calculated in the watt hour per day so that is nothing but determining the hydraulic energy step number 3 now step number 4 is that determine the solar radiation available at given locations once you have calculated amount of the hydraulic energy required you should have to calculate the solar radiation available at given location in terms of equivalent of peak sunshine radiation that is nothing but 1000 watt per meter square hours for which solar pv module is characterized typically this number of 5 to 8 varying from season to season and location to locations so once you calculate the hydraulic power required you have you should calculate how much solar radiation or solar energy is available and according to that availability of solar energy how much capacity of solar photovoltaic cell you have to use or solar panel you have to use that you can calculate then step number 5 that is last step determine the solar determine the size of solar pv array or motor consider the motor efficiency and other losses that means you have to calculate here in the step number 5 how the size of the solar panel and that solar panel is required to drive the electrical motor so you should know how much hydraulic uh, head you have to use and for that how much capacity of motor is required according to that you have to design the solar size of the solar pv array or mode so that's are the five steps by which you can design the solar pv water pumping systems all of you understand that so before considering a case study let us look at some of the definitions related to the pv system so before seeing the actual case study let's see some definitions so first definition is total water requirement and that we have seen in the step number 1 so total water requirement means what how many liters water you required per day or you can calculate meter cube per unit day so the size and cost of your system depends on the amount of water required per day so solar pumping system are designed to provide a certain quantity of water per day where the daily water quantity required is the sum of all requirements during the 24 hours for more legible design worst case of the water requirement should be considered if the amount of water used every day varies then weekly average or monthly average can be taken for the calculations so that is nothing but the total water requirements next the definition is related to the total dynamics head that is tdh so total dynamic head is indicated in the terms of meters so it is an important parameter as far as the design is considered the tdh that is total dynamic head is given in meters it signifies the effective pressure at which pump must operate it primarily consists of two parameters total vertical lift and total frictional losses the total vertical lift is the sum of the elevation standing water level and draw down the elevation is a height difference between the ground and the height at which water is discharged standing water level is the height difference between the ground surface and the water level in the well when the well is fully char charge condition and draw down is the height by which standing water level drops 
due to the pumping as shown in the figure so that is nothing but above the water pumping system so typical pv water pumping system is shown here so next definition is related to the frictional losses so frictional losses are indicated in terms of equivalent meters okay so let's see what is the frictional losses frictional loss is the pressure required to overcome friction in the pipes from the water pump to the point of the water discharge it is given in equivalent meters and added to the total vertical lift for the tdh calculation that is the total dynamic head calculation the frictional loss depends on many factors like the size of the pipe flow rate types of fitting number of bends etc usually the tables are used to calculate the frictional loss but if water discharge point or tank is close to the well then an approximation is taken if the tank is within 10 meters of the well then frictional loss is taken as 5% of the total vertical lift the above definition would be useful while doing the calculations that means in the actual case study or actual numericals problems we have required that all definitions meanings so in the today's lecture we have seen what is the water uh, solar pv water pumping system so block diagram we have seen related to the solar pv water pumping system then we have seen the different steps involved in the solar designing the solar pv water pumping systems and also we have seen some definitions in details so today we will stop here for the today's lecture but in the next upcoming lecture we are going to see the actual case study related to the solar pv water pumping system okay so thank you friends